Hey guys, today I am going to talk about Alpha Investments video, the glory days of magic are behind it. I actually disagree. I think magic, if it has one or hopefully a whole block of amazing sets, they can turn it around. I've seen it happen when I was a kid in Urza Saga. Magic was basically dead. People were selling their collections for pennies on the dollars. A lot of people just didn't even want to play Magic anymore. Alliance, uh, Alliance and Ice Age, they were really awful sets, right? Just mind-blowingly, mind-numbingly, really bad set. Necropotents and all. Oh man, they were, that was a terrible time to play Magic. And then a set came along called Urza Saga and all the people who complain and whine and say they were going to quit Magic forever, they came back. And not only did they come back, the population of Magic players exploded. This has happened a few times in Magic history. Return to Ravnica is another very interesting set. I hate the designer, but he did a good job. It was a very powerful set. You felt like, you know, wow, the Shocklands are back. Uh, and Modern was hot, and you needed that reprint desperately. Yeah, people came back. So there's been many times in the history where Magic looks like people are complaining. Uh, actually, far worse than today. Uh, today, I think the voices are amplified by social media. That is one of the reasons that you hear very loud voices. But Magic has survived. And you know it, it, it will continue to survive. All it needs is one creative, one very well designed set. I, I look at it from Marvel and Disney point of view. You know, Marvel the Endgame was a, considered a masterpiece by some people, and after Endgame, they just printed like you know it's almost like inflation in Joe Biden. They just printed so much money, or they made so many movies, like. What was it? Miss Marvel. Uh, they did uh, She Hulk. They have Daredevil on the way. They have Galaxies of Guardians. They have no, no, four movie Love and Thunder. They had Black Panther, um, Wakanda Forever. They had the multiverse of Doctor Strange. They had Spider Man again, probably. I don't know. There are just so many blanking movies, and they're all low, lower quality to the point that. Marvel recently announced that for 2023, it will focus on, oh, even on Guardians of the Lost Galaxy, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, they have a Christmas special. I mean, that's how many things they're pumping out right now. They're even pumping out Christmas specials. So when you pump out that type of amount of, you know, Ant-Man, yeah, Ant-Man has one too, right? Quantum Mania. It's just non nonsensical. It, it doesn't, um, you're worried about the quantity over the quality, if you will. And for a Magic the Gathering, it, it made the announcement that 2023, they are going to have even more sets than before. So if you thought 2022 had a lot of sets, wait till you hit 2023. I think they should ax some of these sets. It's almost like when I make YouTube videos, because if you make YouTube videos too far in advance, which Wizard of the Coast does, it makes these sets two to three years in advance. It doesn't really have the pulse of the community at the time. And when some of these financial decisions like raising MSRP for Dominator United versus, you know, previously during the recession times, I mean, some of these decisions were made when magic cards were doing relatively well. And, you know, economy was in a better place. So they're not very agile because these sets, and I understand they take a long time to design and print and so on. Yeah, I get it. Play test. But at some point in time, you need a banger of a set. Like magic is not gone. It just needs, you know, I, I, some improvements have been made. The MPL, which I hate so much, right? They don't want to cancel Teresa Nielsen, my favorite artist. So Unfortunately, you know, I, I check her website every often. I actually recommend you guys to check her website. Maybe you have a uh, Christmas gift, you know, support her. You know, so shout out to Teresa Nielsen. Uh, she has a website. I think it's like TeresaNielsen.com or NielsenArt.com. I'm sure somebody can link it below um, using linking magic. <laughs> Maybe I, I mean, I'm just so lazy that I don't. 
I will try to link it if you know I'll try I'll pin it I'll put it this way okay somebody put it at the website and I see it I'll pin it assuming it's a real website and not some other type of website um it doesn't take very much for magic to get its groove back on I mean in my opinion it would be very the solution is quite easy in fact the solution has been is create a good set create a good product and then people will stop complaining. If your business, if your business is creating magic sets and you're lazy and you're just gonna reprint everything, you know that's going to be, you know how well that's gonna be received. Use some creativity, work on some new mechanics. You know, if they came out with a new Urza Saga, a very powerful set. Like power, like Return to Ravnica was a very powerful set. Death Rite Shaman, Sphinx's Revelation, um, you got uh, these 10 shock lands, right, ready to go. Jace AOT was pretty good. You got a lot of very powerful cards in that block. And then you, you go to Dragon Maze, and it's like, oh, okay, whatever, right? But we had a good RT, we had a good run. Once that, so you might not even need a whole block to be very good, because I go back to Innistrad. Innistrad was a great set, but the two other ones, Avacyn and Dark Ascension, were not considered very good. But Innistrad was a banger of a set. You make one of those, your glory days are ahead of you. Now the question, you know, the question has to be asked, can they make one of these? Now that's a far more interesting question than, oh, hey, you know, let's all just whine and cry ourselves to sleep. I don't know. I don't know if they have the correct team. Um, I don't know if they have the correct people to do it because the question would be if they could make these, then why don't they just make them constantly? Because a lot of things have to be right. The power level has to be right. The eternal playability of the cards have to be right. The collectability of the cards have to be right. Um, a lot of different circumstances, even outside of Wizard of the Coast control, the economy, you know, whether or not this is a product that makes sense to buy, uh, whether or not it's enjoyable to open the pack. Is there like a chase chase, you know? <sighs> I hope the best for Magic the Gathering. I know sometimes we're very negative about the game and I myself, but you know, I gotta survive as a store. Like I can't carry a game that is like this bad. You know, when Pokemon is just blitzing, I mean, Pokemon, the alternative artwork is, holy shit, man, my dude. Like when you see a little kid and they pull out, even just like a really bad one, they just, I mean, they know what it is. They're excited about it. They're, uh, I have not seen that in no Magic players at all. Uh, I mean, there's not that, how can I, 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 if you are a store and you have one product that is failing and you have another product that is just crushing it, no matter how much you love that failing product, you owe it to your business and to your customers and still be in business to focus on the, pro, on the product that's doing well. I mean, you cannot focus on a product that's failing, my dude. Um, Cause then your business, then your whole business will be gone. And obviously that would be bad for everybody, but mostly you. So to kind of conclude on this and really bring it all back into one, you know, kumbaya moment. I don't think magic is dying. I don't think it's dead yet. Uh, I think it needs some help and it needs a banger of a set. I mean, it needs something where you, everyone is like, wow, this is the new Urza. If, if people said, wow, this is a new Urza saga. You don't think everyone would stop complaining and they would just buy packs and open and play standard? Yeah, they would. These sets are the problem. So the, there, there's a lot of these ancillary problems, right? But it's kind of like the NFL team. I live in Houston. We have the Houston Texans. They are very bad and they don't win many games. <laughs> okay, I'll just put it that way. They are very bad and they don't win many games. Um, when you lose, I mean, losing and winning, that's kind of like producing a good set. And then a lot of the things that like, oh, we don't have a QB or coach is kind of bad or offensive coordinator is bad. Well, I mean, at some point in time when you're the Houston Texans like, and you just lost so many games, everyone's bad. Your QB is bad, every, everyone's bad. Um, those flaws can be covered up if you win. And to win in Magic the Gathering, in my opinion, they need a set. They need something to be this wow. Like give you like wow. And without that, the game could die. 
and maybe the best days are behind it. But I still believe that there are people in Magic and Wizard Coast that love the game and are smart enough to overcome the dumbasses who are trying to destroy the game in Wizard Coast. And I believe that they can go ahead and fire a bunch of people, including Mero and Aaron. I've always been prominent supporter of firing them. I think, you know, Mero being a psychopathic liar who's been caught lying about the reserve list multiple times in writing on his own blog at all, right? And uh, Aaron, who has no idea why the game is failing or standards not working even today. Now, wouldn't that be a question that you would ask you know, a while ago? So two clueless individuals, one of them a psychopathic liar. Um, you remove those two people, you put a new person in head, you know, in Mero's position to tell us the truth, to give us real information, and then you take a person and put in Aaron's position to get feedback from the community. Even if you just switched out those two people and for like, and you made them like people who love the game, I think the game would be saved. Really simple. You switch out the, the main spokesperson, Mero, and you switch out the person who is, you know, getting the feedback from the community, Aaron. And you switch them with new blood, with young blood, like younger blood, um, and people who actually love the game and want the game to grow. And are not, you know, just kind of just so intangible with the game. It, it reminds me of like a professor who's been there for 25 years. Yeah, he's just going to use the same test that he used last year. It's what happened at NYU. They used the same test they used last year, right? For chemistry at least. And then they go oh, the big thing because people got access to the test last year and so on. I was a teaching assistant during that time uh, when that happened. And it was actually kind of, you know, I knew that they were using the test from last year, but the students weren't supposed to know. Uh, but then the students found out because it's really hard to hide that, right? So anyway, the overall conclusion, the overall, my overall takeaway on this uh, matter, if you will, is I hope Magic can get its act together and it's possible. It's not dead yet. It is dying, but it, it can, one, one good set can change it all, right? Hi guys.